What's up guys? Welcome back to another Stay Fresh production. It's really late while I'm shooting this, so I'm gonna be real low key. Don't wanna wake anybody up. I have a really, really cool video for you guys. This idea was actually brought to my attention by one of my subscribers, Darren Newell. What's up, man? He's been around here for a while and he threw out this suggestion to me a while back and I found it really kind of cool. I didn't know how I was gonna go about doing it, but I wrote it down on my list and decided to try to do something with it. So it finally manifested itself. So this is gonna be something a little different. As many of you guys might already know, but maybe you don't, I'm a musician. I've been involved in music for over 20 years. Primarily what I play is jazz. I play the trumpet, play a little bit of piano too. Piano was my first instrument, but I don't really perform on that so much. I teach piano and I still use it as a tool for composing, but trumpet is my primary instrument and trumpet and jazz <laughs> go together really well. So this particular video, I'm gonna be talking about five of my favorite jazz musicians. And these are gonna be guys that have already passed, um, that have done their time and had their legacy already laid out. And I'll be trying to describe them very briefly and I'll be trying to attribute their characteristics to a more modern fragrance, to something that you might smell nowadays. So we're gonna jump right into it no particular order or anything like that. And I'm just gonna be describing each of these musicians with three main adjectives. I'm not gonna give you a whole history lesson on them. Maybe we can do that later on. So this first one, one you've probably heard of, you've probably heard this name, we're talking about Miles Davis. Great trumpet player, musician, band leader, composer. Three words I would use to describe Miles Davis would be innovative, contemporary he was always contemporary always in the modern time always progressive and just cool i mean look at this picture who doesn't want to look like that so a fragrance that i would use to describe miles davis I'm not saying that he would wear this or he smells like this or anything like this um, we're going to talk about dior om the original from 2005 when it came out there was really nothing like it even today, it's still its own fragrance. It blazed the trail to have others kind of follow in its footsteps. You know, we've seen other houses kind of create fragrances along those lines using that dominant iris note in a very powdery way and cosmetic way. Truly a, a unique fragrance in its own right, even today. You know, it's understated, but it still kind of draws you in. You know, it has depth, it has thoughtfulness to it, like Miles and his playing and his approach to improvisation. And despite all of this, it's still very mysterious. And Miles was a very mysterious man. He was very much in the limelight because he was very big when he was around, but he was a man of mystery. So that's gonna be number one. Moving on, next is gonna be John Coltrane. If you don't know, John Coltrane was a great tenor saxophonist uh, who was once a bandmate with Miles Davis, played in his band for a few years in the 50s and John Coltrane went on to play with other musicians and lead his own bands and have his own sound. And three words I would use to describe John Coltrane, introspective, transcendental, and fierce. So I was looking for something that's raw, though refined, and undeniably present. And I landed on an interesting fragrance, Black Number no. One from the House of Matriarch. I'll put a bottle here on the screen. This fragrance, oh man, it smacks you in the face. There's a woody, green, leather pungency that it really comes with right off the top. So it kind of shocks you a bit. It's like, it shocks the senses when you smell it. It's truly unforgettable. You know, and it smells like there's so much going on there and because there is, but these particular notes, they come together in such a unique way and it's very captivating. Now listening to John Coltrane and his band, it was kind of the same vibe. They had an unrelenting fury. <laughs> the fire of the band never smoldered. I mean, John Coltrane himself could play an improvised solo for over 30 minutes. He could just improvise and improvise and the band would match his energy and they would go on and on and on. I can only imagine seeing him live. You know, there's a whole lot going on there, but it's all very cohesive as a vibe and you, you just kind of have to let it blow over you. And that's why I feel like these fragrances, there's a lot going on. It's very, very robust, but it's beautiful. It really is when you just look at it for what it is. It's a beautiful fragrance, it's purely unique. So that's John Coltrane. Number three is gonna be Thelonious Monk, great pianist and composer. 
Very interesting guy. Three words I would use to describe Thelonious Monk. Steadfast, confident, and quirky. And a fragrance that I would use to describe it, Thelonious Monk would be Andy Towers, Lair du Desert Marocain. Oh man, I actually just got my nose on this fragrance for the first time recently. I got a sample, finally, and uh, really blown away by this fragrance. The scent is purely itself, just as Monk was. In fact, there's a famous quote from Monk saying, a genius is one who is most like himself. And I take that with me to this day, as an artist and as a human being. Lair du Desert Marocain, I'm, no, I'm not saying that right, but sorry, it's late. Very refined composition, extremely unique, and perhaps a little bit abrasive at times, just as Monk could be to some people. When it came to doing interviews and things like that, Monk did not hold back. He was, he was going to speak his mind, and he was not going to care if it offended you. And this fragrance can be that way, especially when you first get your nose on it too close. It's just going to come at you truly as itself and you just have to decide what you're going to do with it but if you open your mind and really just take in take it in in its entirety for what it is it's truly beautiful monk had such a unique voice i highly recommend checking out his music in fact what i'm going to do down in the description i'm going to leave one to two tracks if i can for each of these musicians to check out the music to really see if you can wrap your head around what you're hearing and how it relates to these fragrances that I'm talking about. Now this is purely subjective from my perspective, both auditorily and olfactory in terms of smelling and hearing. So this may be different and that's what's cool about it. Maybe this idea will get around if anyone has a strong interest in music and comparing it to fragrance in this way. So moving on, fourth is gonna be one of my first influences on the trumpet. This is Freddie Hubbard. Three words I would use to describe Freddie, agile, robust, and soulful. This dude, this guy, Freddie, such a fat, big sound on the instrument. Really just smack you in the face with this sound. The fragrance that I would compare Freddie to though, is actually Herod from Parfums de Marley. Now why? Well, it's because of this duality that Herod brings. It has this lightness to it. It's not gonna scream at you so much all the time, but it is going to be present. But the depth and the richness and the blend of this composition is the soulfulness of Freddie Hubbard's sound and improvisation, in my opinion. He had the blues all up inside of him and it came out in his plan. And Herod in particular have these sweet and tobacco accord as well. Both of these create another duality that work together. They're kind of opposites, but the way that they're blended, again, just really, really gorgeous. Very, very, again, robust, just like Freddie Hubbard. So my last pick, and this is not the last pick, literally, but on this list, fifth guy I'm going to be talking about is the great Clifford Brown, another trumpet player. You can see I'm a little biased, but there's pl plenty of others. I could have I could have done the list of 15, 20, 25, 40. 50 musicians, but that, you know, we'd be here all day. Clifford Brown was someone who, he was taken from us very young. He actually died at the age of 26 in a car accident, going from one gig to another. Uh, very, very tragic, very unfortunate uh, for the jazz world because in the short life that he lived, he left behind a legacy that shook the world of jazz, and especially for trumpet purely a virtuoso. So three words I would use to describe Clifford Brown, one of them being virtuoso, another one being warm, and third being joyful. From what I heard about Clifford Brown, and I've done a lot of research on him, a very joyous, jubilant guy, just very generous, warm-hearted, um, loved to smile and laugh and, you know, loved his wife. I know that he wrote many songs about her and one of his most famous songs is a song called Joy Spring, which was written for her, and it's what he called her, his Joy Spring. And it, the song really has that vibe to it. I'll leave a link to that down below. It's a song that really brings joy to my heart. And I learned it very young, and I've always loved to play it. Now, a fragrance that I would use to describe Clifford Brown, believe it or not, is actually Aventus. Reason is, I wanted to find something that had a lot of depth 
and it could pack a punch all at the same time. I decided on Ventus because up top you got this bright kind of citrusy pineapple you know going on it just really comes off as very very pleasant kind of light honestly but underneath there's this tone of of warmth to it there's something in there and that was Clifford you know just as a person as a human just very you know he's just gonna be there he's gonna be pleasant and it's gonna be very cordial and um, I heard many interviews with him he just seemed like a really nice guy to talk to when it came time to play though Clifford he would scare you <laughs> with the amount of fire he would bring to his playing but pure sincerity and warmth in his sound just like in his heart from what I believe and that could be akin to the woody smoky musky and vanillic nature that Aventus has when it dries down very very deep very rich very beautiful and it can leave you in awe and surprise you just like Clifford so that's where we're gonna end this had a lot of fun putting this together, so thank you again, Darren, for the suggestion. I got a list of other suggestions from some of you other guys. I know you guys leave me comments and you think I don't see them, but I write them down. The ones that I feel like I can actually accomplish, I write them down, and maybe I'll get to it at a later time. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Let me know down in the comments what you think. Peace. See you guys in the next one.